Hi, before we start, go subscribe to my second channel. I have finally created one, and it's going to be pretty much everything that isn't anime and manga. I have a lot of things that I want to talk about, and eventually uh, I do want to do some pretty casual, simplistic gameplay stuff on there as well. So if you are interested, and if you do want more content, head over there, subscribe, and very soon I'll start releasing a lot of content that I have. I appreciate you, and thank you. So I woke up today feeling very nostalgic. I'm not entirely sure why, but I decided to go back and look at the last time I ever made a video on Tokyo Ghoul, talking about it directly. Do you know how long it's been? It has been almost two years since I've directly talked about Tokyo Ghoul or Tokyo Ghoul Re, which in hindsight isn't necessarily surprising, but I thought I would kind of reminisce about it today. Remember the good times and remember the fun I had with it. I think Tokyo Ghoul for a lot of people was an incredible experience. It might be one of your first mangas, it might be something that you just deeply fell in love with, or maybe it was something that you didn't really enjoy. Not happy. But I think a lot of people can confidently say that the amount of attention, emotion, visual intensity, the artistry and the understanding for characters, their mental health, everything that Sue Ishida brought forth with Togu Ghoul being his first official serialization was incredibly impressive and rippled through the world. Very good. With that, I would like for you to take a little trip down memory lane with myself to kind of talk about my experience with the story and to hopefully channel or spark your own experience with Tokyo Ghoul or Tokyo Ghoul Re in any sort of facet. So, let's begin. I remember finding the story towards the midway point of Tokyo Ghoul. It was obviously releasing weekly at this point, and I didn't realistically know anything about it. I think at the time when the first chapter released, I briefly remember hearing about it, but not necessarily paying attention to it because it was so long ago. But when I came across it once again, I decided to read it and absolutely fell in love with it. At that point in time, my experience with manga uh, wasn't all too massive. I probably might have read like a, a good handful of many different stories uh, that were mature or seinen or shonen, shoujo, romance, etc, etc. Just completely different genres. But my experience with those genres wasn't too in-depth. So when it came to Tokyo Ghoul, having a seinen or quote-unquote mature story story that was a weekly series was kind of very unknown at that time, especially because weekly seinen series weren't really successful, or if they were, they weren't translated into English, so it was very difficult to read series that were releasing weekly. Even till today, the success of weekly seinen series isn't really a thing. I'd imagine it's because of how difficult it is to potentially translate and I kind of bypass a lot of those mature themes the best way possible, but even with the global reception that Tokyo Ghoul received and Tokyo Ghoul Re, it still wasn't enough to show businesses or corporations that mature, dark-themed, tragedy-driven storytelling within a weekly format can be extremely successful. The only other series that could compete with Tokyo Ghoul at the time and was the crown of the weekly seinen experience or weekly young jump was Kingdom. And Kingdom is not translated into English. It is one of, if not the most successful weekly seinen series, but it is not translated. And I assume it's because it's based around political events and kind of ancient China and warfare and it's uh, indicative to real world things but not a direct reflection of it. But even still, you would think over the amount of years that both of these series have dominated the industry and has shown not only Japan but also everywhere outside of it that they could be inherently successful. Definitely not happy. Side note, if you haven't noticed, I am a little bit disappointed that even with the success of these series, weekly seinen manga isn't as successful, hasn't been propped up on a completely different scale, but we do have different variations of it now, which is definitely a very good thing, but I can't say is directly correlated or linked or birthed from Tokyo Ghoul and Kingdom specifically, two primary weekly seinen manga. I fell in love with Tokyo Ghoul very quickly. I think it's one of those series that you can kind of fall in love with, even if you're kind of queasy with the amount of artistic value that it brings across in its intensity or its gore or its graphic overall. Even if you feel uncomfortable with the traumatic themes or experiences or the emotion, or the intensity of that emotion uh, can be very triggering for some people. But I think the overall amount of finesse that Ishida gave these storytelling concepts, all of these different facets, was so finely tuned with real world experiences. And it's kind of difficult to explain 
explain in that sense, but what I mean by this is that as very over-dramatized his characters were, and the powerful chaotic positions that they were in, they still felt inherently relatable to their core. Happy times, good reading. Because of this, you have this very weird sense of connection to a lot of individual characters within Tokyo Ghoul, even if they're not part of the main cast, even if you don't see them all too often. They had so much uniqueness, so much soul and character that made them so memorable. They impacted you, they overwhelmed you, they made for such a lovable experience every time you seen said character on the screen, and uh, maybe the relationship dynamic was blooming between other characters, which which elevates it even further. Praiseworthy. Very happy. I think it's very difficult to describe the genuine appreciation that I feel a lot of us have for Tokyo Ghoul and its characters because of that authenticity, because of that raw emotion, that vulnerable nature that every single one of them have, potentially a traumatic experience that feels real and authentic, and even though it is masqueraded in a very over-dramatized light, it still felt respectable. It still had a finely tuned amount of respect with so much knowledge and attention to detail. So he that knew exactly what he was writing about with the characters when he was putting them through certain mental hurdles, jumping them through mental or emotional gymnastics, but then doing the extremely intelligent move of linking those gymnastics to the powers, to the half cuggages and full cuggages and the Kagane abilities themselves evolving and being a representation of one's mental state, of one's emotional vulnerability. For me, this was a genuine genius at work, because at this point in time when the story was releasing, stuff like this hadn't really been seen before. And that's not to say it's completely brand new or unique, but it's almost like Ishida took a very simplified version of a vampire concept and completely recontextualized it for ghouls. You'll probably notice a lot of similarities between ghouls and vampires, which you may or may not like, but there is enough of a distinction between them where it doesn't feel like it's just copied and pasted, ghouls feel like they're entirely own entity away from vampires. But if you dig far enough, you can see very simple and core foundations leading back to vampires and that whole concept. I'm not sure if this is where he got his idea from for ghouls or if he ever expressed it, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if he was interested by this and completely redesigned it to fit ghouls and to have them this specific type of way. Good, good. So we have all of these great things. What elevated it further? What is something that had so much love poured into it that everyone was kind of almost addicted to? That would be called the weekly reading experience. If you do not know what the weekly reading experience is, I don't blame you. It's more of a, a generalized concept that I like to use uh, for specific series that tailor their stories for the weekly reading experience. Great example of this is Chainsaw Man, something that is elevated because of it being weekly. It adds a completely different element of chaotic storytelling that is in succession of one another uh, very closely, obviously once a week. Every story that you come across has its own reading experience, and they're going to be tailored around that specifically. This goes for any manga, regardless of where they're published. They could be bi-weekly, they could be monthly, they're going to tailor the storytelling experience around its release. Some series like to weaponize that release schedule more than others, and Tokyo Ghoul is a prime example of a story that did not hold back, from start to finish. Salivation inducing. What I mean by this is that it would throw all this chaoticness at you, but with purpose, with intent. So it wouldn't feel overwhelming, but you would still get such a valuable experience every single week that kept you addicted, that kept you coming back every single week. Almost like you're a junkie, fiending, waiting for Tokyo Ghoul to release. And I remember the times when waiting for these very climatic moments or these chapters specifically was such a long and tedious process. Absolutely everyone that adored the story felt the same way, that the weekly reading experience was unparalleled and still to this day the only series that has gotten even relatively close for me personally to Tokyo Ghoul or Tokyo Ghoul Re in its weekly reading experience.
Legends is Chainsaw Man, but Chainsaw Man does it differently. Chainsaw Man handles its chaotic nature very purposefully and throws it all over the place for you. It's very crude and humorous, but has this very beautiful depth underneath it that not a lot of people want to experience or can experience because they just want to enjoy what's on the surface, which is perfectly fine. With Tokyo Ghoul, however, because that story underneath, because of that trauma, because of that emotional vulnerability uh, and everything intertwining with the powers and the purpose of these characters and what they're trying to do, everything was given to you all at once every single week. Initiative was extremely smart. He would love to troll his fan base and keep us on the edge of our seats and not show us things specifically for that reason or tease it symbolically through artwork he'd released elsewhere or in the prior chapter. Good times indeed. I think that was such a creative way to get the community so alive and thriving was the symbolic nature that was intertwined within it. And it wasn't just surface level symbolism or uh, simplistic foreshadowing that pretty much every story or storyteller creates by accident or on purpose. Foreshadowing and symbolism can definitely be the same thing, but they can also be entirely different and both equally purposeful and accidental. In Ishida's case, he had a mix of symbolism that was very intentional, very purposeful, but there was also stuff that was accidental. And that is only giving benefit of the doubt to Ishida on not playing on those accidental symbolism. Because there was so much symbolic messages and meanings that wasn't just related to the tarot cards. I would like to personally believe that Ishida done this on purpose because a lot of his drawings, a lot of his artwork, and a lot of his intention is usually with that purpose. It wouldn't surprise me. Maybe he wanted to do specific things. Maybe he didn't have the time to. Maybe because of his self-reflection of this story and how he felt certain times through it, which was very difficult for himself, he didn't feel like he was in the right place to write those specific symbolic things. So they feel accidental. They feel not on purpose. But when you look at some of the designs, especially Uta, for example, I remember when people started to conjure up the idea that Uta and his tattoos told an entirely different story within the background. And I spent a lot of time analyzing it myself and building an idea and creating so many different perspectives for Uta as a character and him being a one-eyed king that we have not witnessed before, someone that was the prior one-eyed king before Carnegie and that was still managing to exist, but we never got it. We never really got solidified answers for it. Sadness inducing times. I feel like I've definitely rambled for long enough. For myself, Tokyo Ghoul is a very empowering story. It's one that has impacted my life. It has pushed me to create content specifically. It's what my channel is centered around at the beginning. I fell so deeply in love with it that I wanted to talk about it constantly. And I made so many videos talking about Tokyo Ghoul and Tokyo Ghoul Re. And while they're very rough and premature and I was young at the time and don't really have too much quality towards them, I still look back on those times when I was creating videos for it, when I was striving to make a lot of videos and to talk about Tokyo Ghoul every single day and the amount of just genuine love and appreciation I had for that story. I still have it, I still appreciate it, but now I think of it more of a legacy. Now I think of it as something that I'll always hold close to my heart because of what it provided to me. Not even just on the YouTube or creating content front. It inspired me, it motivated me, it made me want to look at storytelling differently and to learn a lot more. But also the value it gave in showcasing these type of characters, these type of emotions, these mentalities, these traumas, these experiences, and these beautiful relationships and symbolic nature that would all come across within it. The name I go by now may be entirely different to what it was when I was talking about Tokyo Ghoul, but my feelings still remain the same. I appreciate Tokyo Ghoul. I wholeheartedly love it. And I couldn't be more thankful for Sue Yoshida for creating it. From Tokyo Ghoul to Tokyo Ghoul Re. End time. So welcome to the end of the video. First and foremost, I want to thank you all for watching. No, I did not want to talk about the anime. If you like the anime, if you enjoy it, if you appreciate it, that's perfectly fine. But I never really had a good experience with it. But you can obviously find your enjoyment within it, which is perfectly fine. I would love to know what some of your favorite moments from Tokyo Ghoul are. Something that lingers within your head rent free. Something that impacted you so heavily. Maybe it's a character. Maybe it's a moment. Maybe it's a specific type of emotion or a power, anything. I would definitely love to hear your thoughts. But I want to thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a like and subscribe. I'd greatly appreciate it. Drink plenty of water and I will see you within the next one.
Goodbye.